Hello everybody and welcome back to the FinTech Times. We're here at day two of Money 2020 in Amsterdam and I am very glad to be joined by Raj Sundaresan, the CEO of Ultimetric. Raj, how are you? Very good, thank you. Thanks for having yeah. me here. Are you enjoying the event so far? Absolutely, it's been amazing. It was a full intense day last yesterday. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah yes. it was great. Yeah. Are, are you here for all three days? Yeah, I'm here till at noon tomorrow and take it off. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Amazing. Right, yeah, right, right yeah. to the high end. Well then, yeah, it's been uh, it's been quite an event. It's, they put it together really, really well, and it seems like there's so many people here in the industry as well. Yeah. Uh, a lot of familiar faces, I'm sure. Um, so why don't you tell us a bit about Altimetric, about yourself, and uh, where you've come from? Sure, sure. No, Altimetric, you know, is a pure play data and digital engineering services company. You know, our digital uh, the blueprint, the digital business blueprint, is what a, the real blueprint for us to enable digital businesses for our clients. We really approach it in a very bite-sized manner when it comes to digital business or digital transformation, because this big bang approach is what really fails in a lot of organizations. So we really come and help, you know, really making it a bite-sized and getting business outcomes in a very incremental iterative way. And that's the core strength of ours. And that's our you know, uh, digital business methodology, which we kind of have, which implements this whole digital business without any risking to um, disrupt the existing business. We did not let that happen, and that's important for us in any digital business or digital transformation. So we are, we are based off, uh, you know, headquartered in um, Michigan, mm -hmm. in, in Southfield, Michigan, and we are 5,000 plus uh, professionals worldwide, and we position ourselves as practitioners, really come in and help clients to kind of break down their big problems into bite-sized chunks, and and deliver those uh, very incrementally and iteratively without losing sight of the point of arrival. That's important uh, in these transformations. So we can talk a little bit about where and how clients fail in this bigger transformation and how we could really help and, and kind of eliminate those failures for sure, yeah. Mm. That, was, that was a very, very good introduction. And from what I, I did a little bit of research on your company before we did this interview. Yeah. And I, I saw that you had a very extensive career in, in this space, and especially in, in the realms of digital transformation. What was interesting to me, however, though, is that you very much began your career at the, door, the very dawn of the internet, you know, when this was all, when this sort of all came into fruition. Now, obviously the, the internet is a very core piece of going digital, but I'm just wondering, in that time, how have you seen the digital transformation journey change? Well, I think the, the the digitalization, or what we call it as, uh, has been there existing from the day computers are there, zeros and ones are the way we go. Mm -hmm. But I think the, the speed and the agility at which it's going on today is uh, is, is what is, uh, is keeping us all awake and getting us all going. The reason for that is obviously uh, the pace at which the, the bandwidth available with the, with the internet is increasing, the compute. Uh, is getting faster and cheaper. The storage is getting faster and cheaper. The cloud, and, and always available. These things are really accelerating uh, the need for companies to move from where they were to a more modern uh, way of doing business, and especially enabling the digital business where the consumer preference changes so rapidly, and you got to be reacting to that. And, and how do we do that really? Uh, in a very accelerated manner without disrupting your existing business mm. is the trick of what we, uh, what a lot of businesses are really, really challenged with. And, and, and uh, to your point, absolutely from where it was uh, two decades back to where it is today, uh, the, the, the change, the, the rate at which it's, the change is happening is, is unparalleled. So obviously I, at companies like Altimatic, we are here a pure digital player to come and help clients to kind of help them through the journey of taking them where they are right now to the next uh, generation of digital business, which really helps them to grow their revenues, optimize their margins, and that's our focus. And obviously, we try to avoid this transformation board because it's an overused word, because it's, it's a, a lot to go around. Uh, when people talk about transformation, it kind of relates to a big bang approach, multiple years of effort which is what we try to avoid. And, and we'll talk a little bit about this as we go along, but we do it as Altimetric very incrementally and iteratively mm. enabling digital business, and that's what we do. Mm. And in terms of that journey, what, what, what features would you identify in a successful digital transformation? And what features would you identify in those that fail regularly? 
Yeah, no, I think uh, for us, we look at uh, this whole thing as a digital business by itself. When we say digital business by itself is how do we enable our clients and enterprises to think about growing their revenues, very focused on their business, and how do we enable customer stickiness? How do we optimize their margins? And that for us is all around digital business. The underlying uh, uh, aspects of transformation needs to happen to enable that. So we help in both areas. We come in and help them think about their business, how do they kind of grow their business from a digital enablement perspective, but also the underlying technology and the digital transformation which needs to happen, but make it happen in a way that we don't disrupt their existing business, which is very, very important because currently they're running a business and they're making a lot of money out of that, but how do they transform themselves to take on the next challenge and, and, and also kind of go in and helping the consumer preferences to be catered the way the consumers are looking for is what we do. A lot of them fail because they take this as a more as a transformation journey, as a big bang approach, and that takes multiple years. And while you're trying to do that in multiple years, the business doesn't see any value or outcome out of that. So how do you kind of you know, break it down into smaller bite-sized outcomes so that business sees value out of us is what should be the norm and that's what we help a lot of our clients to to take them through our you know digital business uh, uh, methodology and so that's that's core of what we do mm. taking everything almost in moderation you know yeah um, I, yeah I can definitely see where, where you're going with that I what was really interesting to me though is I, I really feel that sometimes this this journey to digital is is very much the technology, of course, but it's also the people that behind the company. They're, they're very important. The people that that make a company run, that turn, turn the wheels. And in in not just in the fintech industry, but in many industries around the world, we, we've seen what what's been called the Great Resignation, where people are quitting their jobs, they're, they're leaving their positions, and it's really leaving a lot of companies high and dry. So I, my question for you is: is how can we go about tackling this sort of shortage of talent and how can we how can companies source better talent and retain that talent as well no i think uh you know it's it's very important it's very core of what we do and our key ingredient and in what we do is the talent and our digital business methodology becomes the recipe for us to deliver uh, whatever our clients look at from a digital business perspective mm -hmm. so our sourcing is multi-pronged we go where the talent is and uh, you know we are we're a global organization we have presence in south america in mexico in the europe we have poland we're looking at lisbon portugal we have a big presence in india so and in the u.s obviously we are all over so we go where the talent is and our sourcing mechanism is you know we have a lot of networking effort. We usually don't go sourcing, really go in for sourcing talent. We bring in talented engineers into forums, and that becomes a good warm pipeline for us to kind of tap into. And all the other traditional sourcing mechanisms, we do it. But the most important thing is that what we offer to these uh, prospective employees is that we are in multiple industries. Payment and financial services and fintech is our 60% of our business, but we are also in, in a retail supply chain. We are in uh, pharmaceutical as well as uh, you know healthcare and auto auto manufacturing. So you have a palette of um, you know industries where our prospective engineers can come and work, as well as large enterprises, mid-sized, as well as startups. So they have that palette of choosing which client they want to work. With. So so consider other companies where they just get stuck with one product and one industry and one type and size of a. Uh, a company, but here you have a choice, and so that becomes a real attract, attraction for a lot of engineers. We're really looking for a lot of change as they as they work on multiple projects. So that becomes a, a good reten retention mechanism. But also with uh, with the with the uh, with the pandemic, you know, uh, we really our uh, digital business methodology has enabled that discipline of having remote engineers working together, collaborating, and doing that. Um, Discipline product engineering, which is helping us. So, so even that is helping us because a lot of this, uh, the resignation you're talking about, is people trying to force bring people back into work. We are offering that more in a hybrid mode of uh, engineers to work anywhere, and uh, we're trying to go closer to the engineers with more satellite offices. So we bring them once in a while when we have some of the ceremonies of agile when we want the engineers to collaborate. 
otherwise they work from home. So we offer that flexibility and that's important these days because mm. and we've proven it for the last two and a half years that we can work that way and, and it works. And so and that's, that's offered us a very good way of retaining our engineers to some extent, yeah. It's become a, it's become a very attractive option yeah. for, for employees and employees to have sort of like hybrid working environment. And it's really good to hear that it's, it's worked so well in, yeah. in, in your company as well. When you go on a digital transformation journey, how should you approach it to ensure that the end product that you're offering is unique and attractive and desired? I think the, the whole, uh, as I was mentioning, you know, we really look at uh, any of these as enabling a digital business. The underlying you know, aspect of it is to transform technology or uh, to rationalize the technology that you use in it. So how do we really approach that is that you know, laying a roadmap, breaking it, uh, the opportunity into smaller bite-sized uh, you know, outcomes, mm. where in a matter of weeks, the business sees some value they get out of that, and then you iterate from there, right? So that's important for us. So not only for us from a delivering and proving our credibility, but also for businesses, they need to see some real outcomes when you're having a long roadmap. So you don't want, you do want, you know, interim business outcomes, which drives value for the business, or at least helps them to rethink certain things so that they can change what they want to do in the next iteration. So, so we, we usually do that, breaking down into multiple bite-sized outcomes. But I always say, not losing sight of point of arrival or the end state or the target state where we want. We got to not lose sight of that, but incrementally get there. Mm-hmm. And so, so the business sees value as they incrementally get and they get the big value as they reach. And at the end of the day, any product development, it is a continuous development as you hear and the consumer preferences changes, you want to keep iterating. So that's what we laid out. And then a lot of, lot of um, companies fail because they go with this big bang. And I, I think I've, I've said this, uh, and that is what we need to avoid in any of these because at the end of the day, yeah. small um, chunks of bite-sized uh, outcomes really helps and the, and the business really sees value out of that, yeah. Mm-hmm. My, my next question for you is, is in regards to leadership. Now, of course, you're, you're the CEO of, of a very big company, quite a successful company as well, and, and you've, you've been in the space for many, many years. When, when we talk about this digital transformation journey, I think it's also really important to remember that you then need a good leader on top of that to sort of, to sort of make everything work, do you sure. know what I mean? And I was just wondering what attributes would you identify in good effective leadership? I know, I think um, um, really having a vision, vision for where uh, the business have to get to, mm. but just having vision and not having a path to execute that Mm-hmm. is hallucination for me. So having a good vision and laying a path of execution and helping uh, the teams execute with empathy and, and also developing people and leaders as you go along this execution path is very, very important. And integrity is core to what we do. So whatever we do for our, our clients or for our people, that becomes our core aspect of being integ- integrity and empathy is core for any leaders. and. And at the end of the day, uh, as we are doing and having fun uh, is important as well and celebrate successes as we go along, it's important mm-hmm. for us. So those, I think, uh, important. Um, those are, I think, few uh, traits of leaders, I would say. Mm-hmm. And what's, what's next for Ultimetric? Hey, I think we, uh, we just scratched the surface. We are uh, growing 50% year over year, uh, real profitable, and um, I think we have a good runway of opportunity for the next coming uh, years, multiple industries and fintech and, and payments is huge for us. And, and uh, you know, majority of our leaders come from, you know, multiple of these payments companies. So we really lay that path. And we're looking forward for uh, Money 2020 in Vegas uh, mm-hmm. as well. And and I'm, I'm ex-Visa, ex-PayPal. A lot of um, leaders come from that kind of uh, background. So we bring a wealth of that experience. But and, and uh, the investment was pouring in pre-pandemic in the fintech, and financial services world and payments world, but the other industries like the pharmaceutical and healthcare and and supply chain and retail is just starting now. They're just tra- waking up after pandemic and they're going to try to get their digital business going. So mm-hmm. we see a huge opportunity for us, and 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 I I think we will have there's I, I call it limitless opportunity. So the growth for us is uh, going to be you know at least fifty. 
plus percent year over year. That's what we're looking for, yeah. The sky's the ceiling, it sounds Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, Raj. I hope you make the, the most of Money 2020 and, and really enjoy your time here. Thank you. Thanks, thank you thanks for much. having me here. Yeah, thank Brilliant. you.